Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2018 Lincoln Navigator. Up front is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6 and down below is a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Lincoln Navigator because it's been a little while since I've driven one. I've driven one before and you'll see a little montage here of the ones that I have driven but this is a top tier trim. This is the nice one. This is the one that you want and it has a couple of different features that I haven't experienced quite yet in the Navigator and I'm excited to show you guys. But let's get back to that 3.5 liter V6 under the hood. Well, it's an EcoBoost twin turbo V6 that we've seen in a lot of different cars. I think it's a really solid engine and it puts out about 450 horsepower which is quite a lot, but then again, you have to remember that that engine is pulling along half an apartment complex because this Navigator weighs so much. So it's not particularly a sports car, but the power definitely feels adequate. You can merge onto the highway with ease. You're not going to feel like you're at a power deficit, which is really, really nice, again, for a large vehicle like this. Like I said, paired to it is that 10-speed auto, and I like it. It's nice and smooth, and I don't even really notice it shifting. While I'm driving right now, it is shifting, but I honestly couldn't tell you when or how. Very quiet. It does the job and doesn't ask any questions, which I love. Last but not least, the Navigator is all-wheel drive. So let's talk about the interior. This is where the video is going to start to get long. There's so much to talk about in here, some parts I really love and some parts that I really don't. Well, in front of me, I have a digital dash. I don't get any physical gauges. However, on its normal format, I get my speed in the middle, coolant temperature at the bottom left, and my fuel at the bottom right. Everything you really need to see. However, when you switch drive modes, the gauges will change. So for the drive modes, we have Excite. This is going to be basically your sport mode. It gives me a tachometer to the left and it moves my speed over to the right. Then I have Conserve. This is gonna be my more economical mode. It's gonna get you a little bit better gas mileage, although who are we kidding with a navigator? And this will put an MPG gauge up on the screen. Then I have my normal mode. Nothing really too crazy here. Again, very normal. And like I said, it just gets that speedometer in the center. Then we move over to normal 4x4 auto. This will basically decide when to best utilize all four wheels for power. If you're driving through the mud or driving on a dirt road, something of the sort. Then I have slippery, which is for driving in the snow, driving the ice, driving in the winter. This is really going to up your traction control and limit your throttle input so you don't accidentally kick the back end out or anything like that. And then we have deep conditions. This will actually turn traction control off. This is for when you are stuck. And the nice thing is that it actually adds a steering angle diagram off to the left. So if you are stuck, you could tell which way your wheels are pointing. Because if you do a full rotation of the steering wheel, the steering wheel is upright, but your front wheels might be pointed all the way to the left. You don't even know it. So it's nice that you get that little steering angle. The center of the digital gauges can be changed to a couple different things, which I'll cycle through now. And that's done on the steering wheel. I'll talk about that in a second, but I like the customization of it. You know, when gauge clusters are just a screen, I think you should be able to do anything you want with it. And the navigator gets you pretty close to that. No, you can't play angry birds on your gauge cluster, but it's not far off from that. On the steering wheel, I have volume and skip track to the left, as well as some of my cruise control options. And on the right, I have voice commands, my information for the center display screen that we just talked about, as well as some other settings buttons for navigation, music, and that sort of thing. I do have paddle shifters around the back of the steering wheel. And I hope it comes across on camera, but the steering wheel is actually a dark brown. It's almost a dark chocolate, which I absolutely love. I think it's really different. And I don't know if this will become dated, if this will look good in five years, 10 years, but for now, here in 2021, it still looks good. To the left of me, I just have my headlight switches, dimmer switches, and my tailgate button. This does have a power tailgate. And then on the door, we have a bunch of buttons. Up top, we have all of our seating options. Not only are these seats highly customizable, but they are also massaging, which is fantastic. I love the massaging seats. They're not brutal, they're not aggressive. However, the seat has tons of pockets of air that inflate and deflate 
in order to give you a nice slow massage. It's not percussive. It's not like there's a Theragun inside your seat, but it keeps your muscles moving. So on a long drive, you don't feel stiff after getting out of the car. It's not going to cure your bulging disc, but it'll at least make you feel a little bit better after driving far distances, which you're definitely gonna do here in your Navigator. I have three different memory seat options and I can adjust the seat any which way so I can find what's most comfortable. And then down below, I have my power locks and power windows. So a couple of thank yous to the people who made this video possible. First of all, we have Cash for Cars. Cash for Cars wants to buy your car. Whether it's running, non-running, has a good title, salvage title, whatever it is, you can get a free quote from Cash for Cars and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. Our next sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor that plugs directly into your car and pairs to your smartphone. The app allows you to monitor your vehicle's health. It gives you a forecast of issues that might come up and helps you schedule maintenance and find new parts. Our final sponsor is Conplates. Conplates is a suction cup license plate mount for the front of your vehicle if you don't want to drill one into your bumper. All three of our fantastic sponsors can be found in the description below as well as videos explaining them further if you'd like more information, but let's get on with the review. Moving in to the center, we do have a rather large infotainment screen. All right, so let's talk Lincoln infotainment. First thing is that it doesn't look like the Ford system. Now, this is pretty much the same as the Ford Sync system. However, they've changed up the color scheme and the buttons ever so slightly to make it not feel like an exact replica of the Ford system, which I really, really like. I love that distinction between the two. Anyway, we have our nice home screen here. It shows you a little bit of navigation, a little bit of your phone, a little bit of audio, and I can turn on my heated steering wheel, which is really, really nice. But if we go to settings, we have a lot more things to go through. We have sound, which will let you set like balance and fade and compensated volume, quantum logic surround sound for audience. I mean, tons of different sound things there. Navigation, mobile apps, clock, Bluetooth, 911 assist, Wi-Fi hotspot, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Vehicle, we can go to vehicle here. Door keypad code. This does come with the Ford keypad on the door, so you can set that, which is really nice. Back in the day, you were just given a code, and if you forgot it or didn't write it down, you're out of luck. Ambient lighting you can change in here. I love that animation. Let's go back here. Ready? Love that animation. I love that fanfare. It just makes me happy. You know, some guy probably spent a day or two trying to edit and make that little animation. I love that thought. But anyway, we have lilac, green, blue, red, teal, amber, and white. Not that fun of names like Mercedes does, but still, it's nice that you get that variation for the ambient lighting throughout the vehicle. Unfortunately, it's during the day, so we can't really see that ambient lighting, but I like the customization of it. We have valet mode, things like that, and then we have the multi-contour seats. So we mentioned it before, we'll mention it again, the massage seats. This is how you can adjust the seats. This is just for adjustments. And it shows you where you're adjusting it. So this is like side bolsters, there we go. If you're a little skinny mini, you can do that. But me, I am not, so we'll do that. You can adjust the sides, as well as you can then do the passenger, and they get the same amount of adjustment, which is really nice. But then we can also go over to the massage, high, low, or off for the passenger, as well as the driver. And these are the areas in which it is massaging, your back or your butt. So you can have your butt on high, but turn, ooh, that felt real weird but turn your back off or you can have your back on high and your butt on high. You can do whatever sort of pattern you'd like, which is really nice. Last but not least, let's talk about the backup camera real quick. I do get a 360 camera over here as well as I get the standard backup camera, which the lines do adjust when you turn the steering wheel. I can also switch it to this. This is just my backup camera, nice and large, or this is a combination of backup cameras to give you a little bit wider of an angle. My only gripe with this backup camera or the 360 camera is the fact that they put a virtual version of your Lincoln Navigator over the camera. So it looks like it's a bird's eye view of your car. However, they did not take the time to color match your car to the car on the screen. BMW color matches, a lot of other nice luxury manufacturers color match. So this car would be red in our case. However, it's just a black car. 
Not the end of the world, nitpicky for sure, but I would have liked to have seen that attention to detail on the 360 camera. Then we have two climate control vents, our hazard button and our camera button. So the nice thing about the Navigator is the fact that it has a 360 camera as well as a backup camera and you can toggle it when the vehicle is parked. This is really smart. I think if the Navigator has the cameras, you should be able to toggle them. And I understand why you can't do it while going 50 miles an hour. It would kind of become a safety concern at that point. Then I have the shifter. The shifter is actually found on the center console and it always takes me a second. Whenever I get into the Navigators, I always have to remember that the shifter is so far over. I expect a column shifter because this is really an F-150 chassis, but no, it's actually down here in the center, which I actually really like once I do start using it. But this is the first inclination that this kind of feels a little bit like a boat, or at least not like a car, but I'll expand on that idea a little bit later. Then we move to the center console. Up at the top, I do have some radio controls for power, skip track, and source, as well as tune off to the right and volume off to the left. I wish that the volume knob could also be used as a mute knob by pushing it in and muting it. However, that's not a feature here on the Navigator, but that's okay. Then I have my climate controls. I do have heated and ventilated seats, which is very, very nice. Pairs very well with the massage feature. As well as I get controls for the rear AC. So if you have kids and they can't quite either reach their controls or you don't want them to reach their controls, you can actually control it from up here, which is really, really nice. Then moving on to the center console itself, I have a bunch of different cubbies. To the left, I have two USB ports and a wireless charger inside of this cubby. Really, really nice and it's finished in this nice wood on top. I love that accent piece, really gives it a premium feel. And then to the right of that, we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Lincoln Navigator, and unfortunately it fails. This is such a large SUV, I'm a little sad to see that the big friggin' bottle doesn't quite fit. Then we have a nice little control panel down at the bottom for my automatic start-stop, parking sensors, auto holding brake, and the drive mode selector, which we talked about with the gauge cluster. We get a, a bunch of nice drive modes here in the Navigator, which help utilize the all-wheel drive. Then at the very back of the center console, I do get quite the large storage container. This container is so large, I swear you can fit a rotisserie chicken in here in case you needed a snack on your long drive. <laughs> it's so massive, and I love that. It's a large car, it should have tons and tons of storage and up front here it really does but now moving on to the seats the seats are very comfortable i am driving and getting a massage currently which i can't say about most vehicles that i review however it is a pretty common feature for ford products if you get a platinum f-150 they have the massage feature if you got one of the older Ford Taurus SHOs, they had a massage feature. And so Ford kind of knows their way around the massage block these days. And I think they do a really good job. Again, not very percussive, but definitely feels nice and gets your muscles moving. But speaking of seats, we do have two more rows of seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2018 Lincoln Navigator. Now, first of all, as you could probably tell, I have so much space back here, like so much space back here. It's really, really nice. My legs do not have a prayer of hitting the seats in front of me. I can fully stretch out and still not even hit the seats in front of me, which is absolutely insane. A couple of amenities I get back here. I do have volume and media controls back here, which is very, very nice, as well as I get heated seats, fan control, my own temperature, two USB chargers, a 12 volt outlet, and an AC 110 volt, 150 watt wall outlet down here. I also get a nice little flip out cup holder that can hold two cups. However, in terms of like SUVs, like in terms of like Tahoes, and especially against minivans, this is sort of lacking with cup holders. You get the two down here and you have slots in the door, like maybe for like a water bottle, but you're not putting like a McDonald's cup in there for sure. The seats are finished in the same nice leather found on the front seats. However, of course, these are not massaging. But we do have a third row, so let's go do a quick review of that. If you notice over here, there was a button that pops this up and then you can slide it forward. So now we're in the third row of the Navigator. It's not super spacious. However, it is decently fine. My knees actually aren't hitting the seat when it's moved up about 
I don't know, inch and a half like it is right now, I'm actually pretty comfortable back here. However, if you want really good back seats, I still prefer a minivan for the back seats, at least for the third row. I do get vents up here, which is really nice. Sorry, that might've blown out the mic with uh, wind noise. And I have seat controls up here and I get USB chargers over here. So I get a cup holder on either side. So I get two cup holders over here and a cup over. So I get two cup holders over here, a cup holder over there, USB chargers in the doors and things like that. Really, really nice. Now let's go take a quick look at the tailgate and trunk and then we'll talk about the looks. So first of all, two hits on the tailgate and it opens right up, which is really, really nice. Once we're back here, a couple things to note. First of all, I have all of these seat controls, which is really, really nice to fold down these seats. So three L is three left. There we go, auto puts that down. Really nice and smooth. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's smooth, so I'll take it. And then three right. Again, not fast, but smooth, and I like that. And then you could do two left, two middle, and two right. And I can power bring them right back up. That is fantastic and really, really nice, especially for people with bad backs. That's something to look out for. And then you can just flip these up. If you have a bad back, a lot of third row SUVs, they have pull tabs, and so you have to lean in and pull. If you have a bad back, bad vertebrae, whatever it might be, slipping disc, you're not gonna be able to do that. One complaint that the owner has is the fact that there is no natural lip here. So as you can see, if you have anything back here like a ball or anything like that and you're parked at literally any percent incline, as soon as you open the rear tailgate, probably power wise, it's just all gonna roll out. Now you could probably try to fit a cargo net somewhere, although cargo nets are real ugly. So I just wish that they would have dipped this down just a little bit, just an inch to keep stuff like that in. Down here we do have a little storage container and that's for like your jack and roadside assistance and things like that. Again, you can put a cargo net back here, but they're ugly and I feel like just sinking it down one inch would have really helped. Now we gotta talk about the looks. First of all, I love, absolutely love the fact that this Navigator is red. Why do I love that it's red? Well, because I've driven a handful of Navigators and they've always been black or silver, or some other bland, nonchalant, never noticeable color. This is different. This is the navigator that you wanna walk out to in your garage. This doesn't feel like a chauffeur's car that you got at a discounted rate, like the black ones do, like the silver ones do. Those are used for car services more often than not, but I think the navigator looks nice, presentable, and understated. It's not brash, now I know this car is red and that is kind of a more in your face color for sure but the actual styling of the navigator isn't over the top it looks nice and presentable it looks mature it looks grown up and it doesn't look like a childish soundcloud rapper would buy one of these so i think that's a big win but overall let's talk about my final thoughts here in the 2018 lincoln navigator well i have two main thoughts First of all, yesterday's video was a 1979 Lincoln Continental Mark V, and that car was the peak luxury for 1979. Its gauge cluster looked like analog clocks. It was big and comfy, and you sank into the seats, and overall, it was really, really nice. And so I was worried now getting into a more modern Lincoln that they would have lost their way. That after 40 years, Lincoln would be singing a different tune. But that's not the case. This is luxurious. This is nice and comfortable. And it embodies the same spirit and mentality that I felt in that 79 Lincoln Continental. Which was, it's American made and it's built to see the countryside, to explore our beautiful country while inundated with luxury. That's exactly how I feel. You know, the owner of this car, Sarah Jane, which thank you, Sarah Jane, for letting me take out your Navigator. She just got back from a family road trip down to North Carolina. Thousands of miles were put on this car in only a couple of days. And she has a decent sized family and she fit everyone in pretty comfortably and they saw 
some very cool things in North Carolina. They got to see parts of the country that they hadn't seen before. And that's what Lincolns have always been about to me. I don't know why, they feel like one of the most American car manufacturers. I, I, I don't know why, maybe because of President Lincoln. Maybe because President Kennedy had a rough ride in a Lincoln. Maybe it is the presidential motorcades were Lincolns for years and years and years. Maybe it's because my grandpa drove a Lincoln and he was in a political position. So I, I don't know. This car just embodies at least the idea of the American dream. Maybe the American dream isn't obtainable, but then again, maybe that's part of the dream and I don't want to get too philosophical, but the American dream is really just something to strive for and is not something you obtain. But the second thing I want to touch on is how much this drives like a boat. Not just in the size, but there's certain aspects of the Navigator that feel very yacht-like. Starting off with up front here, the shifter is just buttons that seem to have no connection to the rest of the car. Very much like the controls of the boat, throttle being a hand stick and different levers and things that I've never seen or used before. Then moving down, the center console is disconnected from the front of the dash. There's a little gap. Why? I don't know. You can't really stick stuff here. There's no real reason for it but there is a gap, like a boat. Sitting in the back, you don't feel like you're in a car. You just feel like you're in a vessel moving through space and time. All the materials in here, this light leather that covers most of the interior feels like boat vinyl that can get wet and you won't even think about it. As well as the wood accents, they feel like something out of a boat. And I keep saying boat. I really mean a yacht. I'm not comparing this to the little rinky-dink speedboat your stepdad buys for three grand and tries to fix up in the backyard and it just ends up obtaining a bunch of moss and there's something living in it. No, not that. I'm talking about a yacht. I'm talking about a true boating experience. Everything in here feels solid. It's not going to fly off because when you start to jump waves, you can't have things flying around. I genuinely feel like if I pulled up on the back of this seat, just enough, there would be a couple life preservers down there and a rope to go water skiing. I'm not gonna yank on the seats, but I feel like that's what I would find. And I love that because I love boating culture. Again, boating culture is very much entwined with the American dream. There's something different about being out on a lake, and I've said this many times in my personal life, I don't know if I've said this in a review before, but when you're out on a lake, everyone waves to one another. Everyone smiles and waves. Even if you don't know each other, even if you've never seen them before in your life, when you pass by another boat, you give them a wave. I love boating culture. For a kid who has a crippling fear of drowning, I love boating culture so much. And maybe that's why I love the Lincoln Navigator, because I can get my boat expressions out, my yachting feelings, my yachting bucket list out, but I don't have the worry of drowning. I'm not worried about falling off and not being able to swim. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Sarah Jane for letting me take out her Lincoln Navigator. This thing is awesome. If you're looking for a navigator, this is really the one to get. Don't get a black or silver one. It'll really, really change your mindset. And if you can, find one with a tan interior. Yes, I currently own a tan interior and they are a little bit harder to upkeep, to keep clean, but I think it's really worth it in this application. My Mazda 3 doesn't feel like a yacht, so I don't get to reap the benefits of the tan interior, but this, this feels classy. This feels nice. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video. Comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.